The ballots are almost all counted, and the results of the municipal elections this past week show a big increase in the number of women mayors in Utah. And Robert Gerke from the Salt Lake Tribune says that's a good thing. He joins us now live via Zoom to talk about it. So women fared well this election season. I, I think it's great news, Robert. I mean, I think uh, as I was watching these returns roll in Tuesday night, I, I was struck by how many women were performing really well in these elections. Uh, we had women win mayor's races in Sandy, it looks like. There's still some ballots, as Dan mentioned, to be counted there. But in Sandy and West Valley City, two big cities. After Actually, after election night, seven of the 10 largest cities in Utah are going to have women mayor, women for mayors. And it's, you know, it's, it's great news considering, you know, as recently as 2014, only 7% of Utah cities had a female mayor. We, we kind of see how far it's come. I looked at the, I looked at the, all of the cities with over 10,000 people in them, and 38% of them now are going to have women as mayors, and that includes places like Moab, Bountiful, Kaysville. Uh, you had an upset in that Bountiful race that was kind of a big deal. Um, you know, and so you look from, from you know, Logan to, to St. George and Cedar City, you've got women taking these top spots. And it's it's been a concerted effort. It's been it's taken some time and effort and trying to get women to convince women that they can win these races if they run and get them trained up to be candidates. But it seems to be paying off now. So uh, you're focusing here on gender, of course, and I know that that's the topic of this editorial here. But I mean, there are a lot of people who may say just let the best person win, the best leader, the best person with the best ideas for any municipality. You know, I mean, do you think that are we looking at quotas or something or what? No, no, I, I think it's a terrific question, and it's a question a lot of people ask me after I wrote this. But we do want the best candidates to run for these offices, and we do want the best candidates to win. But if you have half of the population that thinks that they can't win or they don't run because they think they can't win or there are obstacles in their way, whether they're real or perceived, then you're not going to get the best candidates if you're immediately disqualifying half the population or excluding half the population. And so the fact that these women are winning doesn't necessarily mean that they're inherently better. Carrie's not inherently better than Dan and vice versa. But we, if you open the field up to anybody who has good ideas and has leadership ability and talent and skill, it, it really it really means you're going to get a better crop of candidates. Also, there's value inherent in diversity, I think. And, and studies have shown this, that women bring a little bit of a different perspective to, to these roles. Um, they've had different life experiences. They work differently. They're more collaborative uh, is, is what the, the research has shown. And so, you know, again, we're opening the field up. We're getting the best candidates we ha can. We're getting a diversity of ideas, a diversity of leadership styles. And I think that can only work to work to these cities benefit. Seems yeah. like to get these underrepresented voices heard, all of them, you know, not just women, but diversity, like you said. Yeah, yeah, and it's it's a collaborative thing too. I mean, the research again has shown that women tend to be less, you know, my way or the highway. They try to bring people together, and it's just a, it's just a different style. It's uh, you know, and so and and again, these are stereotypes, right? This is sort of generalities, and maybe d people work differently. But you've got you know, you've got people from Aaron Mendenhall to Karen Lang in West Valley City. Uh, to to Monica Zolanski in Sandy. All of these are big cities. In fact, over one one and a quarter million people in in those cities with over ten thousand people are going to be led by by women now. And I think it's I, I think it's bringing more voices to the table. And and it also shows I think that we've succeeded to some extent in eroding some of these barriers. Again, whether they're real or perceived. That, that kept women out of these races for so long. And so I think this is now this is unique to in, in some ways to municipal races because they're nonpartisan um, uh, and, and they tend to be a little bit more open. Uh, the process is more open. But we'll I hopefully start seeing this, uh, you know, spill over into legislative races, into, a, you know, statewide executive races and, and, and really start seeing some benefits in that regard, too. Well, women can do anything they want as long as we, you know, look rather than just at gender and discriminations and things like that. Just allow people to run based on their ideas and who they are is what it sounds like you're saying. It's just about removing the obstacles and making and, and making sure everybody believes that they can yeah, do yeah. this. If they have something to offer, that they can do this and this opportunity, so they can avail themselves of this opportunity. Yep. Absolutely. Okay, you can read more in Robert Gerke's column on sltrib.com.